So which exam is right for you? Well, it all depends on how you'll be using GD&T. The GDTP Technologist exam is great for anyone who's looking to have proficiency in the interpretation of GD&T. Some example rules for this interpretation level would include machinists and operators, manufacturing engineers, measurement technicians, suppliers who work with customer prints with GD&T requirements, and finally, anyone who is working with GD&T on prints that have existing design requirements. Now the senior level exam is for anyone that needs proficiency in the application of GD&T. Some example roles include advanced programmers or senior machinists, quality inspection plan creators, design engineers and drafters, process development engineers, suppliers with in-house design, and anyone who has influence on how GD&T is applied to parts or engineering designs. Now, just because you may fit into one of these categories does not mean a different certification would not be beneficial. You should just really ask yourself, am I going to be mainly interpreting GD&T, or will I be applying it or designing with it on prints? Now let's go over the requirements and pricing of this computer-based test. For the 2009 Technologist exam, the price is $500. This can be purchased on the ASME website. There are 150 questions, and in order to pass, you have to get a 78% or better. Finally, there is no experience requirement. Anyone can go and sign up for the test and be able to take it right away. For the senior level exam, the price is $99 more, it's $599. There are still 150 questions and the passing grade is still 78%. But now in order to take this test, you need to show five years of documented GD&T experience. For the senior level test, on the application you have to include five years of experience where you have been using GD&T in a professional setting. This means that references are required, as the ASME sends a verification email to every reference you list. So when I signed up for the test, I had three different jobs in the past five years. So the ASME sent three verification emails to those references at the jobs that I had, just to verify that I had been using GD&T. They really make sure that they check up on you. Here's the sign-up page for the ASME GDTP certification. Now, we're going to include all the sign-up links for these exams in our next lesson section, GDTP Links and Resources. You'll be able to access the links to everything right from our course module here, and we'll be making sure that we keep maintaining this and keep it updated for you. So, what's actually on the test? Well, the ASME has put together the ASME Y14.5.2 2017 that has a full listing of all the topics on the test. Do not buy this standard. It is a waste of money as it's just a rehash of the table of contents of the Y14.5. It really doesn't provide any useful information. The information we're going to tell you in these exam prep sections are available for free on the ASME website, but it's also going to be our personal experience taking the test. So on the 2009 Technologist exam, this is the breakdown of the material that will be on the exam. You can see we have 10% of the overall scope of GD&T, 10% general dimensioning, 5% just on knowing the symbols, 20% on datum references, it's fairly important, 
5% on both form and orientation, 25% on location, which just means mainly position. It's actually very rare that you'll find any questions on concentricity or symmetry. 15% on profile tolerancing, and 5% on runout and total runout. So you can see datums, location, and profile are the big hitters in this test. For the 2009 senior exam, scope, dimensions, and symbology make up 10%. They now have 30% of datum applications. Form and orientation again make up 5%. Location, again, mainly position, makes up 25%. And again, it's very rare you'll find concentricity and symmetry. Profile tolerancing jumps up to 20% and runout and total runout stay at 5%. Now, you can see these are just general categories that can definitely be broken down further into specific subtopics. However, in our experience, these percentages accurately represent the coverage of each topic. For instance, there's 150 questions on the test, so there were exactly seven or eight form symbol or orientation symbol questions. Now we have created a guide for you to make sure that you cover every possible subtopic that can appear on either test. This guide can be downloaded in our lesson, The Definitive GD&T Certification Study Guide.